We're team 17, consisting of Dawson Coates, Joshua Boberhoff, Jaden Grunheide, and Chris Osborne. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Wendy Reffer, and our sponsor is David Miner. This is the Michigan Launch Alliance Liquid Bipropellant Rocket Engine Project. Michigan Launch Alliance is an avenue for students to take part in applicable projects in the aerospace industry. These projects can embark on in competitions such as the IREC or dollar per foot competitions. Our project goals for this were to deliver an engine capable of delivering 75 to 100 pounds of thrust, survive a minimum burn time of eight seconds with a target time of 10 seconds. For our propellants, we decided to choose isopropanol for our fuel and nitrous oxide for our oxidizer. Our OF ratio, or oxidizer to fuel ratio, was decided to be 4.2 to ensure that we were lower than stoichiometric to run cool, but high enough to ensure we did not have combustion instability issues. Here is our combustion chamber design. It is a heat sink made of copper to use the high thermal conductivity of copper to conduct heat away during the test fires. The combustion chamber also has a groove feature on the outside where two clamp plates are bolted together and serve as a base for the injector apparatus. The role of the injector is to properly mix and atomize the propellants in preparation for combustion. The ideal injector is simple to manufacture, provides good mixing and atomization, and is consistent in spray pattern. Well-performing injectors directly correlate to combustion stability, efficiency, and the desired thrust output of the engine. Our injector design consists of three plates of 304 stainless steel, with two inlets for the fuel and one for the oxidizer. Propellants begin to mix after the fuel strikes the splash plate, causing it to impinge with the oxidizer and later atomize in the combustion chamber. This is the design that we made for the plumbing schematic. The intention with this design is to fully separate the nitrous oxide and the isopropyl fuel and mix them once they reach the injector plates. Uh, in this design, we had nitrogen initially propelling the isopropyl fuel, uh, and there's a line in between the two as a emergency purge line if we needed to purge nitrogen out. Through this, we developed a system of ball valves, check valves, and solenoid valves to properly control the fuel and read out the pressures uh, in each line. Our first ignition system consisted of two wires connected by a small nichrome wire to short a pyrogen to then later start the engine. To read thrust, the engine will be bolted to a sliding rail assembly that will push up against a load cell attached to a test stand given to us by Western Michigan University. Here is an exploded view of our engine assembly. Here you can see the two clamp pieces, the three injector plates, and the three propellant inlets or fittings. In these cross sections, you can see a more clear path of the propellants. The top and bottom holes are where fuel will come out, hit the splash plate, and impinge with the oxidizer coming out of the center two holes and will travel down the combustion chamber. For the prototyping, we ran water through 3D prints of some of our injector designs. We are looking for impingement and atomization of the droplets of water. For the igniter, we tested them by using a Duracell battery. The ideal burn is two to three seconds to ignite the propellants in the combustion chamber. Here is the process for machining out our design.
purpose of the cold flow is to verify the plumbing, controls, and injector design. The ideal injector mixes and atomizes the propellants, preparing them for combustion. Water was used in place of fuel to mix with nitrous oxide. The spray pattern must be consistent and concentric around the injector. Our first static fire, we weren't able to measure any thrust from the engine. We had problems with our igniters being blown out from the fast speed of the propellants, as well as the detonation occurring in the combustion chamber, which resulted in the flame starting outside of the combustion chamber. The large pops that you're hearing is also a problem with the OF ratio, which led to overall combustion instability in the engine. One encouraging thing from our first static fire was this image of the mock diamonds coming out of the engine. Mock diamonds are a sign of supersonic flow, which was exactly what was intended to happen coming out of our engine. This gave us encouragement that the engine design was correct, we just had to fix our combustion instability problems in order to gain thrust. Following our first static fire, our main changes were a new pintle added to our injector and buying a new oxidizer tank. Shown here is the new pintle addition to the injector. The oxidizer coming through the center holes will hit the sloped surface and impinge with the fuel, creating more atomization and increasing the stay time in the combustion chamber. This was done to combat igniters being blown out of the combustion chamber by slowing down the propellant's velocities. Here is a cold flow after adding the pintle into the injector plate. It can be seen that the flow is more fanned out rather than straight out, causing it to be slower and have less momentum into igniters to keep them in the chamber longer. We did more static fire testing with the pencil and new oxidizer tank. As you can see in these videos, we're still having combustion instability problems, mainly due to the OF ratio still not being where it should be. The second video shows popping, which was more detonation in the combustion chamber. We needed a more permanent igniter system and a way to ramp up the propellants before entering the combustion chamber. After more testing, we made three major changes to the final design. The first was to include throttleable ball valves into the plumbing system. This allowed us to slowly ramp up the mass flow rate of each propellant before entering the injector. This helped with our ignition. The second was a purge system into the plumbing. The purge system blew out any extra propellants that were left in the hoses after each test. The third was a new igniter system to more permanently and consistently ignite the propellants into the combustion chamber. We used very small solid rocket motors to ignite the propellants. These motors were housed in a permanent plate that was attached to the other three injector plates. This was clamped to the rest of the engine setup. Here is some testing of the new motors. For our final static fire test, we were able to achieve a 12 second burn duration throttling from 60 to 95 pounds. We saw a peak max thrust of 120 pound force.